morning and welcome to Walton's virtual service. This morning is Outreach Sunday and we would like to welcome you to share, to share outreach, to reach out to someone, someone who needs Jesus in their lives. I guess it's a bit of a challenge, right? How do we know who needs Jesus and who doesn't? Duh! Everyone needs Jesus in their lives. Yeah, that's true. For without Jesus, there's something missing. Yeah, that's true. There's a hole, a loneliness, an unhappiness that alcohol, food, shopping, or any of those vices just can't fill. So this morning, it is your turn to reach out to do some outreach. Even if it's just copying the service and sharing it with someone else this morning. Or if it's to drop off something for the food bank. Or check in on that grouchy neighbor down the street. Clean out your closet and donate it to Goodwill or Safety Net. Or buy a coffee for somebody who's working outside. It's pretty cold out, you know. Call and tell someone you miss them. Or drop off some muffins to a senior who doesn't want to bake for just one person. You know, reach out. Reach out today on this Outreach Sunday. Our call to worship. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. A fire burns within us, calling us to service, calling us to prayer. A spirit moves around us, calling us to turn in joy toward the sorrows of the world. Burning, breathing spirit of compassion, we bring our lives to you. Let us worship. Let us pray. Lord, we need a miracle today. Like Jesus changing water into wine at the wedding feast in Cana, we need a miracle today. We are tired, Lord, of the hurts of this world. We are discouraged in the face of injustice, war, poverty, and indifference. We need a miracle today, Lord. Your steadfast love, like a mighty mountain, will not be moved. Your gifts, as many as the mighty winds, cannot be counted. Your glory, like a mighty torch, will not be put out. Lord, crown us with your love. Show us your glory, that in you we may be moved to acts of kindness, love, justice, and mercy. Lord, we need a miracle today. Amen. Good morning. This is the Lord's Prayer, praying during a pandemic. So this was inspired by the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples as recorded in Matthew 6, 5 to 15, and Luke 11, 1 to 13. So let us pray. O oh Lord, we confess our sadness and our fears. We feel stuck, trapped inside, overwhelmed, helpless, and even hopeless. Help us to believe that our present does not control our future, that we can look forward and not just backwards. Enable us to change our situation now by bringing the future into it. Only the radical values of your new order of love and justice will bring your kingdom into our community right now, lived in this and all moments. Inspire and sustain us to bring your kingdom to earth even right now, even in this moment of crisis. Lord, in this moment, we pray especially for those fighting on the front lines of the pandemic, our first responders, nurses, doctors, and other healthcare professionals, and to save as many lives as they can. Shelter them from this virus and grant your healing mercies to those who will inevitably get sick despite their best efforts to protect themselves. Help our government and society to mobilize to provide the protective and medical equipment they need to keep up as best as they can with the onslaught of patients that is already here or on its way. And help those of us not in the healthcare sector to do the most important thing we can do to protect them and lessen the severity of the strain they face. Help us to stay home. Dear Lord, forgive us for the temptations to retreat from our neighbors in this health crisis. 
taking social distance into social withdrawal from the most vulnerable. Forgive those who feel exempt from this disease and therefore exempt from any responsibility for those who get sick. Forgive our leaders and other people of wealth and power who value economic activity over public health and who are willing to sacrifice the worth of human lives for their own political and economic gain. Lord, give us the faith and the courage to make this proclamation even in a time of a deadly virus. Give us the patience in tribulation that the Apostle Paul calls us. Because we know what your kingdom on earth brings, give us the hope of that kingdom in our hearts, lives, communities, and the nations. Let that future we believe in help sustain us in the present, even when things we can't control seem to dominate our lives. Lord, help us to believe that the virus, the threats, the injustices, and the fears they create are not in control and never will be. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory now and forever. Amen. Good morning, everybody, and how are you? Today in our youth story, we are going to do something that seems impossible because we're talking today in our scripture reading about Jesus' first miracle. And Jesus' miracles happened because through the power of God, he could do impossible things. Things like walk on water or rise somebody up from the dead. Or like in today's reading, he turned water into wine. That's impossible. We know that. But Jesus took something ordinary and turned it into something extraordinary because of God's power. Well, today, I can't do miracles. Let me say that first. I wish I could, but I can't. But I can take something ordinary and do something kind of extraordinary with it, something that seems impossible. And I want you guys to try it too, okay? So I've got an ordinary piece of paper, just a letter-sized piece of paper. And what I'm gonna do is put my whole head through the piece of paper. Do you think I can do that? Sounds impossible, right? How can a head fit through a piece of paper? Well, I'm gonna give you a chance to figure it out yourselves. You can use scissors and you can hold the paper and fold it up and do whatever you want with it with scissors. But that's the only tools you can have. Let's see if we can do something impossible. This is a good time for you to pause the video, gather up some supplies, try it for yourself. And I'm gonna check back in a minute and see if you had any luck. How did it go? Did you get it to work? I bet you might have tried it the way I tried it the first time. I folded my paper in half and I thought I'm gonna cut a great big hole right out of the middle of the paper. That seems like it might work, right? Let's see. Cutting a big hole. And if your head is small enough, maybe this would work for you. But not for me. Nope. Okay, are you ready to be amazed? Check this out. Now, look at that. My whole head, and maybe, no, maybe not my whole arm, but definitely my whole head. It seemed impossible, but it wasn't impossible at all. Now, that was not a miracle. God did not tell me how to do that or give me the power to do that. Looking up instructions on YouTube did. But God gave Jesus the power to perform miracles. And even though we can't perform them ourselves, God performs them for us, and he also performs them through us. Sometimes he uses us to be the miracle that somebody else has prayed for. When you love your neighbors, when you help them, when you're kind, when you put others first, you can be a miracle for someone else. And that's what I want you to remember today. Nothing is impossible with God. When things seem impossible, when you're struggling, when it seems like 
You're, whatever it is, is never going to work out. Pray to God. Ask him for a miracle. But more importantly, listen to God. And listen to how he wants you to be someone else's miracle. Can you do that? Let's say a prayer. Loving God, thank you for your amazing power and your incredible love. Thank you for the miracles you perform in our lives every day. Help us to pray to you, to turn to you when we need a miracle, and help us to be the miracle that somebody else needs. Use us to do your work. We ask this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture readings this morning are from John 2, verses 1 through 11, and the first book of Corinthians, chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. <clears throat> John chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. Jesus changes water into wine. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied. My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Nearby, stood six stone water jugs, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water, so they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, Now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, Everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. Our second reading is from the first book of Corinthians, chapter 2, verses 1 through 11, concerning spiritual gifts. Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or other you were influenced and led astray by two mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes, distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in every one is the same God at work. Now to each one of the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another miraculous powers. To another prophecy. To another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another their interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. This ends the reading of God's Holy Word. Have you ever realized that everyone can teach you something? And I mean everyone. You may need to be patient, to listen, to observe, and to reflect. But everyone knows something that can be an important less, lesson for us in the living of our days. One of my mentors uses the expression, here's what I know. I find when I listen, 
I learn an important life lesson. It seems many times, however, we want to impress others with what we know, rather than being open to hearing what others know. I find it so frustrating if you're watching a serious news show where the person being interviewed can never get a word in, for the interviewer keeps interrupting the special guest with what they know. Let me ask you, how many pairs of gloves or mittens do you own? Think about it for a few minutes. I did a list of my gloves. I have two pairs of tan work gloves, one pair of golfing gloves, three pairs of white cloth gardening gloves, one set of dish gloves, one set of black leather dress gloves for outdoor funerals, two sets of ski gloves for tobogganing, three sets of oven mitts, and of course, in these days, a box of rubber medical gloves. I imagine most of us have a similar list. How many pairs of mitts do you think a person living on the street or from shelter to shelter may have? Maybe one? And what condition are they in? Today is our annual outreach Sunday. Every year, our outreach committee collects bags and bags and bags of gloves, mitts, scarves, toques, hats, in all sizes from kids to adults, so people can have warm hands and heads. And don't forget the warm socks that we collect too. Here's what I know. Our two wooden mitten trees is just one of the many ways that Walton makes lives better in a practical sense for those struggling with housing instability. We could say here at Walton we have a hands-on ministry. Though it's a very bad pun, it is nevertheless true that Walton tries to help in practical one-on-one -on -one ways. In our reading today, Jesus is at a wedding reception and he performs his first miracle. They run out of, out of vino and Jesus turns the water into wine. Now it's not any type of cheap box wine, we're told, but it's rather a rare vintage of exceptional wine. Here's what I know. Jesus constantly does the unexpected. We may feel in our lives that we are down to the last drop of the bottle of our living, but Jesus fills us up, fills up our empty souls and spirits with amazing new wine of possibilities and opportunities. In the story of Jesus' first miracle, there is a verse I think many miss when they're reading the text. They focus more on the wine, I guess. In this direction, it's the direction that Mary gives the banquet servers at the reception. John records it this way. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Here's what I know. Mary is right. John knew that too. So did Paul. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Wise advice as we begin 2022. Now to a very personal question. You don't need to answer. You may want to plead the fifth. Have you gained weight over COVID? They're called the COVID curves 
or the pandemic paunch. I don't know about you, but I certainly give thanks that our local grocery stores are still well stocked. Maybe they're not stocked like they were before March 2020 with as wide a selection or larger quantity, but you can usually find what you need. The real question when grocery shopping lately has to do with the sticker shock. When you go to check out, the prices, they seem to just be going up. And not just a quarter or 50 cents at a time, but an increase often of a buck or a two. Many of you who are watching this virtual service can certainly afford the rising cost of groceries, but many, many cannot afford these new higher prices. Even at Food Basics, let alone the new prices at Farm Boy, the Outreach Committee tries to create their own version of when Jesus fed the 5,000 with the fish and the loaves. As a church family, we strongly support the food bank, not just with donations of food, which can still be left to the church, but with the donations of thousands of dollars. These financial donations allow the food bank to buy in bulk the most needed products at the time. Walton feeds every day so many people because of our ministry with the food bank. Our physical donations of items and our financial donations. We also here at Walton have people in the congregation who volunteer helping the critical work of the food bank for those whose cupboards are very sparse. Our first Corinthians reading today, Paul reminds us this. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but all of them in every one is the same God at work. Outreach is just one of the many different opportunities Walton provides for us to walk in the footsteps of Jesus, helping others both known and unknown to us. Here is what I know. Outreach is our largest committee and does a very diverse ministry. And today we want to say thank you. Thank you for those who serve in outreach and those who support it in one way or another. Well, soon it will be income tax time again. Have you been keeping all your receipts over 2021? The things you need to deduct like medical expenses to prepare your taxes? Some of us have accountants to prepare our taxes. Other people can do it all by themselves. But there are those who can neither do income taxes themselves or afford to pay others to do their income taxes, to get them ready to submit. Many government benefits cannot be received each year unless you submit your taxes each year. The Walton Outreach Committee has a team of volunteers who help those with modest incomes to file their taxes. This is a free service to those in the congregation and those in the many communities that we serve. Another way that Walton helps in a hands-on manner. Even during COVID, this tax preparation program has continued in March and April. I sit in my office, I look out my window and I see members of the outreach team doing people's taxes while socially distanced in the Walton parking lot, using their car hood or their trunk as a table. This is what I know. 
Walton is helping people one on one. And what a practical service this is to prepare taxes. Did you receive any unusual Christmas gifts this year? This is one of the Christmas gifts that I received. It's an apron. You see, I am blessed to be able to work in the Walton's new commercial kitchen almost daily. And I always wear an apron when I'm washing the dishes. I pray many of you later in 2022 will be able to spend time in the new Walton commercial kitchen as well. Well, this gift apron has upon it a ketchup bottle. The bottle says, catch up with Jesus, let us praise and relish him, because he loves me from my head to my toes. Try that again. My head to my toe, my toes. I pray we can finally have a barbecue this September 2022 for Rally Day. And I will wear this apron and I'm sure I will get many tomatoes and relish and mustard on it. Oh, but it would be so good to join together in a Rally Day barbecue. Well, there's another important hands-on Walton ministry and it involves making sure many, many families, including kids, both young and teens, receive Christmas gifts on December 25th. Maybe not unusual aprons, but gifts for those who live on meager income. Gifts that they will truly relish. Our white gift program reaches many families, allowing them not only to have a better Christmas, but really even to have Christmas gifts at Christmas. Well, as you are able and socially distanced, please ask a member of Walton's Outreach team what they personally know about helping others through their varied ministry. Let's celebrate outreach ministries at Walton here today. God bless them in their service.
a miracles liturgy. This is a thought-provoking litany exploring faith and doubt and the miracle making of Jesus. It comes from Grace Church in London. Lord God, you spoke into darkness and chaos, and then there was light. You imagine this earth in its complexity and beauty, and you called it into being. You created humanity in your own image and gave us a home to live in. We believe you can do miracles, but even if you don't, you still are God. Lord God, you walked with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, through the fiery furnace. You shut the mouths of hungry lions and kept Daniel safe until morning. You gave Hannah a family when she despaired of ever having a child. We believe you can do miracles, but even if you can't and you don't, you are still God. Lord God, you changed water into wine so the wedding party could continue. You calmed the storm and your disciples with a word of quiet authority. You transformed a boy's panic into a meal for a multitude with plenty left over. But we believe you can do miracles, but even if you don't, you are still God. Lord God, you healed a woman from 12 years of bleeding and rejection. You asked Bartimaeus what he wanted and then restored his sight. You watched a paralyzed man being lowered through the roof and helped him to his feet. We believe you can do miracles, but even if you don't, you are still God. Lord God, you called Lazarus from the tomb and restored him to life. You walked past the mourners at Jairus' house and gave his daughter back to him. You suffered a horrendous crucifixion in order to defeat sin and death and give us life. We believe you can do miracles, but even if you don't, you are still God. Lord God, you told your disciples that they would do greater things than you had done. We hear and read stories of miracles in our world, of you healing the sick. Setting prisoners free, releasing drug addicts from their addiction, providing the right amount of money at just the right time. We believe you can do miracles, but even if you don't, you are still God. And yet, Lord, we don't see many miracles happening around us. We have friends with cancer, and we pray, and they are not healed. We have friends who long for children, and we pray. And they and do not conceive. Our doubt is mixed with faith. Our trust is accompanied by questions. We acknowledge the mystery of faith and prayer and the ways in which they are connected. We acknowledge that you often do things differently than the way we would do them. We long to know you better, to understand more of your ways. And we believe you can do miracles. But even if you don't, you are still God. Lord, we believe. Help our unbelief. Offering of ourselves, our gifts, our tithes. As everything we have is the provision of our Creator, may we give back some of what we have been given to help others less fortunate than we are. We are taught that giving is a blessing, and we know that we can never outgive God. Let us give of our tithes and offerings with cheerful hearts. Gracious God, you bless us with such an abundant supply. Our every need is met, and with our cups overflowing, we thank you. Please accept our offerings so that they may be used for the building of your kingdom here on earth. We ask that you show us the ways that we can best serve you and use these gifts we offer to glorify you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray as we share God's love for the world. 
God, our holy friend, you allow us to share some of your love for the world. While we are here praying for the world's healing, others are busy implementing that healing. Later, when we are out there trying to give of our best, may others remember to pray for us. Give your grace to all peacemakers, those who endeavor to resolve with justice all conflicts between nations and within communities, commerce and industry, parliaments, families, marriage partners, colleagues and friends. Let your grace support those who fight with and for neglected people, those small ethnic groups with no political clout, the little people who are being ripped off by the rich and unscrupulous, and the deserted wives or husbands who are raising a family alone. Endow the merciful folk with your sustaining grace, those who treat diseases, bind up wounds, feed the hungry, resettle the homeless, care for the orphan, visit the prisoner, encourage the handicapped, Watch with the dying and grieve with the sorrowful. Endorse the work of this church with your enabling grace. Keep it close to the agenda of Christ. Let us be joyful in worship, warm in fellowship, inclusive in outreach, open in discussion making, humble and sensitive in evangelism, and gracious in our ecumenical endeavors. Bless any servant of yours who is keeping the faith against the odds, those without the encouragement of other Christians at hand, or without even a distant congregation that can pray their names with affection. Please let your grace renew them daily, and may they know your spirit as friend and counselor. Visit each one of us with your grace, loving friend. Dismantle our fears, build up our faith, deepen our love, clarify our goals, sharpen our insight, widen our compassion, and open our minds to the new words you wish to speak to our situation. In the name of the patient, insightful, and healing Christ, we offer these prayers. Amen. Let us receive the benediction. Go now from this place, remembering that the God who calls us to mission also calls us to feasting and dancing. Let us remember that there are holy days described in the Jewish texts in which there is to be no fasting, but eating, drinking, and sharing of miracles. May the one who turned water into wine turn our tedium into festival and show us how to alternate between commitment and carnival. May God's will be done here where we live. May impossible things come to pass. May we find strength in the journey and joy in the struggle through the grace of God. Amen. Mm -hmm.